first things first, before we talk about the derivatives, why we usually talk about LAH? Go back to the book. The whole chapter is practically dedicated to L ascorbic acid. Our ode to ascorbic acid. We heart LAH. <laughs> um, simple and short, it does work. And it mm. has a lot of data covering um, the main trio of um, benefits that's mm-hmm. associated with LAA. Mm-hmm. One is antioxidant slash like m- more age prevention type of um, um, benefits. Mm-hmm. One is um, brightening. Mm-hmm. It, vitamin C is a tyrosinase inhibitor. Mm-hmm. So there's that. And then last but not least, it boosts collagen production. Mm-hmm. With derivatives, you are mostly going to get one out of three, more proven, I mean. So a lot of the derivatives we cover today, they are mostly um, marketed as and more proven as hyperpigmentation fighters. Yeah. I just want to add that, you know, a lot of times the reason why people go to derivatives is for two reasons. One is you're experiencing irritation with sorbic acid, which is possible. Which happens. Very- we have found that there is a subcategory of people that just really don't do well with sorbic acid. The other thing is, like, you are really concerned about um stability Mm -hmm. um the the fact that it's changing color on you the smell is getting stronger on you smells like fermented meat yeah i i do want to suggest that you know if that is your concern just know that we often recommend vampire settings Mm -hmm. so store in a cool dark place um and just when you do get it just use it all the way through Mm -hmm. um don't like Come back to it, you know, after a few months and then then break, take a break. Um, That's probably the best way. But as for its shelf life, if you keep to those parameters, like, I I just really wouldn't worry about the stability problem as much, especially if your skin can't handle ascorbic acid. I mean, it's got so many great benefits. So, yeah, you know, that's why we, we champion it as like the biggest like age prevention move for your skin. So anyways. <coughs> <laughs> so some reasons why you might want to consider uh, a deriv- mm. vitamin C derivative, as Victoria mentioned, irritation. Mm. If you can't handle L ascorbic acid, you might want to try a derivative. Most of so LAA famously is stable under a pH of three point five. Mm. Um, that's it's not the low. O- yeah, that's not the only reason, but it can contribute to mm. irritation. Mm. Um, so that's one, and most of the vitamin C derivatives will be at a slightly higher pH of like mostly around five, some even a little higher, which is closer to your skin's pH. Um, because you want to, because there's so many of them coming out that's all true. the time, and, and they all sound so fancy, and they're coming out in like new, like new formulas, fancy packaging. I get it. Yeah. So, and then three is if you want to layer a lot of active ingredients. Mm. Of L ascorbic acid because of pH it's at and also um also its instability. There's some cases out there and some studies that show that it's not super friendly when you layer with a bunch of other actives. So the texture isn't great. Sometimes it gets pretty sticky, mm-hmm. so to want to layer anything over it, I get it. Me. Yeah. So Today we're gonna run through rapid fire style, sort of rapid, <laughs> some um different <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> some different um vitamin C derivatives. Mm. The first category, and these are not any sort of official categories, these are chemist confessions categories. Mm-hmm. First category is the current industry favorite love children, as in you see it. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. It is everywhere. Especially I, recently. Have you noticed yeah. like this season is the season of vitamin C derivatives? Yes. Okay, hold on. Tin foil hat. <laughs> oh, man. okay. We got to prepare <clears throat> it this time. <laughs> I think there is a really beastly salesperson at mm. Big THD Ascorbate <laughs> and Big 3 0 Ascorbate acid. That's like, hey, man. FLA ascorbic acid and THC ascorbic <laughs> is like so far awesome. And all the brands are like, oh my god, you're so awesome. So, like, I don't know who's selling these two ingredients, but they're everywhere right I now. think also it's like, oh my god, we don't have to deal with chemists and their dumb stability issues. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So these two are um, are a lot more stable than all ascorbic acid. Yeah. And, um, and there are claims like THC ascorbate is 50 times more effective than L ascorbic acid. Um, Show me. 
Yeah. <laughs> For those of you, please show me. Show me the money. <laughs> and, and those claims usually are made in vitro without mm. a lot of like actual skin data to mm. back it up. But anyway, there are two main industry love child, and that's your THD ascorbate that stands for tetrahexyl ascorbate, ascorbate, and also 3 o ethyl um, ascorbic acid, which sometimes is per, um, marketed as ethylated ascorbic acid. Yeah. And THG, probably the unique thing about it is mm -hmm. that it's oil-based. Mm -hmm. um, so that does kind of provide a unique angle in terms of how it's formulated, layering-wise. Um, and Laura did a really cool post on THG, actually a couple, um, okay. highlighting it. I try to be fair because yeah. sometimes like science is a moving progress. So even if we talked about it back in 2018, maybe there's a new really cool study that we missed in 2020 so i kind of did just how science is guys yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i did an update uh on this molecule um trying to see if there's any new data on it <laughs> not really <laughs> um so <laughs> tg ascorbate is generally considered a skin brightener mm. you can find quite a few clinicals on it but then if you dig a little deeper you'll notice that all these clinicals combine it with other proven ingredients already yeah. i love this one study that has 7% THC ascorbate. It's great at treating melasma. Da, 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 da. And you read closely, you realize the formula they tested also has 10% L ascorbic acid. <laughs> and you're like, very cool, guys. Very cool. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> yeah. The only paper I did find that's like more recent mm -hmm. it, that only uses THC ascorbate as the uh, main main active ingredient mm -hmm. is uh, one that uses up to 30% THC mm. ascorbate. So, in summary, um, you look for higher levels. If a brand claims this ingredient but doesn't tell you how much is in it, it's probably not worth it. Mm -hmm. um, and really, the most important thing is if the brand itself has done a clinical test on it. Um, so I have to give a shout out to PTRs, Peter Thomas Roth's Potent C, because mm. they combine it with a absurd almost absurd amount of ferulic acid and vitamin e i think it's like two percent ferulic acid and three percent vitamin e or the other way around which is really really high by the way and also that's that's not the point <laughs> sorry i just don't understand a little bit too high but yeah. they did do a clinical test on on this combo with 20 percent THC ascorbate and yeah with these new molecules it's a lot of times it's hard to if it will work or not yeah so um yeah that's it oh and one more note vitamin c products the very a lot of times will say oh use as a first step after cleansing but that's because most vitamin c based products are water-based but tg ascorbate as victoria mentioned is oil-based yeah so make sure it comes after your hydrators i think your toner your hyaluronic serums this goes after exactly all right and the second love child is 3 o um, this one <laughs> is a very awkward love child. Yeah. So this one, I would say is also trending. We sh we're seeing a couple new launches with it. Um, and we're starting, we're seeing some pretty high percentages. Um, we, Gloria found one from Allies of Skin that's up 25% zero ethyl. And, um, the other awkward thing is actually there's more data on this being a potential allergen than actually having efficacy. So what does that mean? Um, so traditionally, I think one of the most original, mm -hmm. really, this is really, this is a little dated, but one of the oldest um, data sheets I've had, I've gotten on 3 ethyl from the manufacturer, mm -hmm. it recommends using it at like 2%. Mm -hmm. So these brands coming off, 25 30 i'm like oh. so again you know going back to the news when we're talking about percentages um now we're having this issue with vitamin c where they're like i'm used to ascorbic acid being mm. at 20 percent therefore all of these derivatives have to be at 20 percent or higher exactly <laughs> and that's just not how that works at all you know and every molecule is unique and exactly. how it interacts with skin exactly even if it falls under the same category of vitamin c so hopefully that gives you um, a better perspective on how all these new molecules kind of like fit in and things to look for. Um, what we will say is 
if you do find a very high percentage through ethyl, definitely proceed with caution. Patch test. Patch test. Um, what that means is just place it on a small spot on your face. Mm -hmm. um, look for a reaction overnight. See how your skin responds, you know, and then also definitely introduce it one at a time. Don't just start a bunch of new um, products all at the same time, including this one. Um, but yeah. I, yeah, I will say 3O Ethyl is one that's like a little concerning to me because some of the, mm -hmm. for each of these categories, I was trying to find like representative mm -hmm. products um, that have these ingredients. You so, feel like this one abuses? Yeah. The percentage. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have um, the Allies of Skin that combines 25% 3O Ethyl with 10% THD Ascorbate. And then there's also um, uh, Ole Herricks and Banana Bright. <laughs> <laughs> Banana Bright that has 15% 3 ethyl with 5% PHA yeah. glucone and lactone. That's these are, lot, these yeah. are all pretty high. Yeah. And then the OG is Nyad, which is like a mm. sub brand to um, the Ordinary, has an ethylated one that's also pretty high levels. I think that one's a 10%. Yeah. These are all like, yeah. So, getting a little high. Okay. Just to help people organize their thoughts, mm -hmm. is it a better move to do a higher percentage THD? Mm -hmm. We'd want to pick that over uh, 3O ethyl to start. If they're, let's say you want to start exploring these derivatives, let's like mm -hmm. build them a roadmap. Actually, yeah, I would, especially given so every ingredient out there. I don't want to. I don't want to make it seem like real ethyl isn't the irritant. devil. <laughs> no. But there's always a potential no matter which way which yeah. way you go. But let's just say when I was like doing my research, backing up this this episode, the sheer number of um, contact dermatitis mm -hmm. cases because of this ingredient is a little alarming. Did they mention like percentages um, of the products they use for these allergen cases to be honest i didn't compile that data because mm -hmm. a lot of times they they might not even call not the really specific know. product yeah, well, so true. you don't really know so sometimes for these case reports all you can do is gather the number of times it's been recorded right. frequency mm -hmm. yeah okay got it all right so that's for the two love child at the moment. <laughs>